We're now going to look at a cascode current source. And a cascode current source does exactly the same thing it does if, when we're thinking about using it as an amplifier. And that is that we get a higher output impedance for our current source. So for our cascode current source, we might have some reference current that we feed through a stack of transistors that are diode connected. These diode connected transistors are V bias generators that we connect to an output stage. So here we have M1, M2, M3, and M4. We're taking our output current through the stack of M1 and M2. And if we recall, our output resistance for our cascode, R out is equal to RO2 times 1 plus GM plus GMB2 times RO1. Or it's approximately equal, we say, to GM times RO squared if the devices have the same size. So this is much higher than a single transistor's output resistance. It's actually higher by the intrinsic gain of a transistor. So we have to ask, what's the cost? Well, the cost, of course, is that we have a reduced operating range. We now have a stack of transistors that we have to keep saturated. So we'll have a lower operating voltage that we can work over. So let's look exactly at what that DC biasing problem is. So we know that we're going to have some minimum drain to source voltage that we have to keep these devices working over. But we're going to see that the problem that we have is actually worse than just a, a drain to source saturation voltage. It's going to be much lower than that. Okay, so let's look at what our minimum voltage swing is on this cascode, and we'll redraw it just for clarity. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to do a KVL loop from here all the way to this point in the transistor uh, between the two transistors, M1 and M2. So if we do that, we see that we need a VGS3. That VGS3 is diode connected up to this point, so we need a VGS4. And then we drop one VGS2 back down to the drain of transistor M1. So if we do our KVL loop, we would see that the voltage that we need across this transistor is VGS3 plus VGS4 minus a VGS2. So Vmin is equal to VGS3 plus VGS4 minus VGS2 across transistor M1. Now we can rewrite our VGSs. We can note that VGS is equal to the overdrive voltage of a transistor plus a VT, a V threshold, VTH. So rewriting this and assuming that all the transistors are of equal size, we could just approximate that each of the transistors has the same VGS. And what we would find then is that Vmin is equal to 
1 V of V plus a VT, H. Now we look at transistor M2 and we know that all that is setting, the, there, nothing's really setting the voltage condition on transistor M2, so all that this transistor needs across it is a V of V. So if we look at the output voltage minimum, we find that the cascode current source needs two VOVs plus a VTH in order to stay in saturation. Now this is pretty significant. So one thing to ask yourself is how bad is this? Well, if we were using a 5 volt system, with a typical overdrive voltage of approximately 0.3 volts, and let's say that our uh, VTH is approximately 0.7 volts, then our V out min would be 0.7 plus 2 times 0.3, or approximately 1.3 volts. Now remember, in a 5 volt system, this would be 25% of our headroom. Or the maximum voltage minus the min voltage. So we're going to look for some solutions to fix this problem.